Hello friends, I want to talk about something that's fairly serious today and that is what the two leading causes are for fatal helicopter accidents. Now these two things are competing every year um, for first place and the two are flying into wires, which sounds really crazy I know, but flying into wires and flying into, inadvertently flying into IMC conditions. First one I want to talk about a little bit is flying into wires. So um, this is not typically like the big transmission wires that you would see, um, although that can be the case sometimes. Those can be also very hard to see. Um, usually it's small wires that are strung across the, the bottom of little valleys. Um, sometimes it's up the side of a mountain, it's cable cars. Um, those can be a big issue sometimes. And uh, depending on where you are in the world, some areas are really, really uh, wire rich areas. So there's just wires everywhere. Some of them are marked on maps, some of them are not. And, uh, and as helicopter pilots, the nature of flying a helicopter is a lot of the time the operations that we do are more low altitude, more low level stuff. And that causes us to be in this environment where we are fairly close to these wires. Now there's things that we can do to try and avoid that. Um, there's lots of telltale signs that we can look for to find out where the wires would be. And, uh, and so we get trained to, to look for those things. But even with that training, um, it still ends up being one of the leading causes of fatal helicopter accidents, which is it's just really sad. Um, and I think again, uh, education is the first step to prevention and um, so we need to be talking about this more and you know with our students we're, we're training this and talking about this because I think um, there's little steps that we can take in our flying habits and our choices to uh, avoid flying in these wire areas when we don't have to be and that's the key because um, there's times where we have to be down low in, in, in these areas where the wires are and then there's some times where we don't and we just make the, the choice to be down in these areas. So um, that is definitely one leading cause. The second one is flying into IMC conditions. I want to elaborate a little bit more on this one. I think this one is pertinent uh, topic at the moment. So what does IMC stand for? IMC is IFR Meteorological Conditions. What is IFR? So um, basically when a helicopter, a helicopter has two different ways that it can fly, okay? So one is based on what they call IFR and the other one is VFR. VFR is what we do, that's uh, what you guys have seen in all these videos is visual, uh, meter, uh, vi visual flight rules. So we're flying uh, with line of sight to terrain at all times. Um, you know, there's clouds around us but not we're not in the clouds and uh, so we always have visual reference to the ground to the terrain and everything around us that's called VFR flying okay the other type of flying is IFR flying and that's instrument flight rules and so that's when we're using only the the instruments that are in the aircraft and we're tracking uh, it's kind of like uh, if we were gonna fly from one airport to another it, it, it's uh, the best analogy I could use is like taking a highway, okay? So if I wanted to get from one city to another, um, I would hop on a major highway, I would fly that highway to get to the other, or I would drive that highway to get to the other city. Um, because it's a, a predetermined route, it's, uh, you know, it, it's, uh, it's gonna be flat enough and it's gonna be safe enough for, for us to do that. And, uh, and it's something very simple to drive on. It's kind of the same in the sky, so we have these airways in the sky. Um, IFR routes they call it and so what you would do is you would fly on these IFR procedures you would take off from an airport or a heliport or whatever it happened to be you would pick up one of these routes and then you would fly that route to another destination whether it's another heliport or another airport and and all of that flying would be done on your instruments so what, from the time that you take off your head is inside you're looking at the instruments that you have um, all the navigational equipment on board the aircraft is going to allow you to fly on these safe routes, kind of like uh, flying on a highway, and that's gonna ensure that you're gonna avoid any terrain or any obstacles that are in the way. Um, and then you're gonna be controlled as well. So there's gonna be air traffic control um, or center control that's gonna be controlling that aircraft. This is what airlines do all over the world. This is what helicopters do as well all over the place. And, um, and so they're gonna control that aircraft, make sure that they're not gonna fly into any other traffic or anything um, until they get safely to their destination, okay? Now, when you're flying um, VFR, to switch from VFR flying to IFR flying um, in very, very short notice is very difficult, okay? So when you're used to having your eyes outside, using reference around you and everything, um, and then all of a sudden the conditions get really bad, the clouds get really low, and all of a sudden you have to make the choice, okay, I'm gonna go IFR, I'm gonna fly on instruments. 
it's very difficult to make that transition to all of a sudden be flying on instruments and not only just keeping the aircraft upright and stable, that's not as hard, but the, the hard part is uh, navigation. So finding out where you are, trying to pick up a route, and then to be able to fly safely to a, a destination, okay? Now, uh, uh, the reason I think that this uh, is maybe a pertinent topic right now, some of you guys have been commenting, um, asking me to uh, see if I can make any comment or anything as a helicopter pilot on the recent Kobe Bryant crash. Um, it just uh, absolutely breaks my heart uh, when I heard the news. Um, just hearing what happened to him and his family and everybody else that was on board, my heart goes out to everybody that was involved, all the family members. Uh, it is just absolutely heartbreaking um, to think about the accident that happened and um, it is far too early to speculate on uh, the cause of the accident, what happened. Um, I've, I've done as much digging around as I could to see uh, what information is out there. There's, there's little bits of information that we can take. I'm not going to try and put uh, any sort of piecing together of anything. Um, but it does appear that possibly, and this is just a, a hypothetical at this point, possibly weather was a contributing factor to this accident. Um, the reports that I've read is uh, one of them, the aircraft flew through controlled airspace and it requested special VFR. So what that means basically, we have VFR procedures, uh, VFR rules, so that means in uncontrolled airspace, or in controlled airspace I guess, uh, we need to have three miles visibility in front of us and we need to have 500 foot vertical separation below clouds and then one mile horizontally separation away from clouds and uh, if you don't have that then we can request what's called special VFR and that allows a helicopter to fly down as low as a half a mile visibility and clear of cloud. Now this is in Canada, I believe it's the same in the US um, but this is in Canada that I'm talking about and uh, so that's not a lot, a half a mile visibility, clear of clouds so you're just not in the clouds. So this aircraft had requested special VFR to fly through a controlled airspace. Then later on, um, it had requested um, flight following from, I believe it was SoCal, and uh, flight following had told them that they were too low to be able to get flight following. Um, and they had uh, mentioned that they were gonna be flying Highway 101. So just a couple of indicators like this. Um, on flight radar, it appears as though uh, at the time of the accident, the helicopter was flying about 140 knots in a descent of, I believe it was 4,800 feet per minute. Uh, so a very fast descent rate. Um, some possible indicators saying that maybe weather was a contributing factor. It, it's possible, and again, this is just a hypothesis at the moment, but uh, possible that they were trying to avoid bad weather and accidentally got into cloud. And this is, this is where the term uh, inadvertent IMC comes in. Because it is inadvertent, um, you're trying to avoid the clouds, you get disorientated, you get too close to them, and then you end up in the clouds. And then you have total disorientation. I've done other videos, um, talking about what it's like to get a helicopter into clouds and uh, and how quickly you can lose your spatial awareness, um, how quickly the helicopter will end up upside down or spinning or something like this. Um, I don't know that that was the, the cause or the case in, in this situation. Um, with an aircraft like the Sikorsky S-76, it's a large staple aircraft, has autopilot. Um, typically, I'm not sure if this one did or not, um, lots of instrumentation to be able to do um, IFR flying. I, I have no idea if the pilot was IFR rated or not. Um, that that will come out, I'm sure, in the investigation. Usually these investigations take somewhere up to two years um, or more to, to have um, a full report on. Um, so it's going to be a while before there's um, full details on this. And um, when there's fatalities like this, uh, y you may never get all the details, unfortunately. But um, on an aircraft like this, definitely it, it potentially could have had the capability of going IFR, instrument flight rules. Um, in a flight like they were going, um, it sounds like they were going to a, a, a basketball training center, the location that they were flying to may have not been able to have an IFR approach. And this is something I was just talking to my wife uh, this morning about this. Um, and I, she was just trying to get understanding of how it works flying IFR and instruments and so forth. And um, so for those of you that don't understand this, you can't just fly IFR to any location. If I wanted to fly up into these mountains right now up to Stave Lake or something and the weather was really bad, I couldn't just pop IFR on instruments and fly through the mountains and, and land somewhere up in the mountains. Um, I need to, as I 
I mentioned earlier, I need to be able to uh, fly on these predetermined air routes or these airways, okay? And um, so going to a certain location, it's possible you might not be able to do that IFR. That might be only a VFR capable flight. And so, um, again, I'm not, uh, I'm not making any claims or, or um, statements or anything saying that I think the cause was uh, flying into I invertent, uh, I invertent IMC, uh, but it may, been, it may have been a contributing factor, I'm not sure. Um, either way, I think it's important to talk about this stuff because there, as, I'm, as I mentioned earlier, education is the first step to prevention. And uh, with our students, again, we're, we're trying to teach this stuff that you never ever want to fly into clouds. When we were on our world trip, something that's interesting, uh, going back to PDM, pilot decision making, um, when we were on our world tour trip, we were in so many places around the world where we had horrible weather and we were constantly faced with these decisions. And you know, when you're close to home and the, the stakes are very low, it's easy to make the right decision. It's easy to make a choice, say, you know what, the weather isn't very good. I'm just gonna land, I'm gonna wait it out, or I'm gonna turn around and head back home. When you have a lot of forces, external forces that are kind of pressing down on you, um, kind of subconsciously forcing you to make a decision, it makes it way harder to make the right call. And uh, throughout this world trip, I'd say there was at least six or seven times where we had to make really, really tough calls on weather, and uh, and it's way harder. Let me tell you, we had so many factors um, kind of uh, forcing us in a, in a way. I, I'm going to call it that because that's the way it actually feels um, to try and make decisions that we shouldn't be making. And um, you know, sometimes we made the right call, sometimes we didn't. And um, Luckily, we're here to talk about it, but uh, it, it's definitely something that the more factors that you have, the more, um, I guess, hinging factors to, to make the right decision, the harder it is to make that call. And so um, it comes down to PDM, it comes down to pilot decision making, which can be so, so, so difficult um, to battle these, these forces that we deal with on a regular basis. And again, I, I think this principle goes to all different walks of life, um, different scenarios, different situations. We're faced with decisions on a regular basis. Um, sometimes the decisions are easy, but because of external forces that are kind of pressing down on us, uh, those decisions can become harder. So I think we just need to make uh, the right decision at the right moment um, because it's, it's our safety, it's the safety of um, everybody that's with us. This goes for driving, this goes for anything. Um, you know, if you start getting onto slippery roads and bad conditions and you have people in the car with you, uh, what kind of decision are you gonna make? Are you just gonna pull over and wait out the bad storm or you know, pull into a Tim Hortons or something like that and, and just wait out the bad weather and, and for things to, to get better? That sounds like the right choice and the easy choice to make. It's not always the, right, the, the easy choice. Um, it is the right choice, but it's not always the easy choice. And um, so I think these two leading factors of fatal helicopter accidents um, can be reduced, can dramatically be reduced if we're constantly reminding ourselves to make those right decisions. So um, I'm gonna wrap this video up with that. Um, I would just say, you know, Keep, keep the whole family in your prayers, everybody that was affected with this incident. Um, constantly force yourself to make the right decision in hard choices. And um, I guess that's all I'm gonna have to say about this one. We'll talk to you guys soon. See ya.